Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Julie here. Um, I'm going to be making cream cheese chicken chili. Now, I'm in my house, and it's morning. It's about 10 o'clock and um, or 10.30, and I'm a little chilly. So I thought, what can I make today that um, maybe I have everything in my house and I can keep warm and make something comforting? So one of my favorite Shibboleth recipes, and I have these a lot. I do this one a lot on my challenges. Unfortunately, it's not on the February fire starter or the Shibby Shop meal plan challenge. However, um, only because it's a negative one um, weight loss meter recipe, which is great. But during the challenge, um, I'm asking for mostly two and three. So I thought, number one, what can I make today that's gonna be a comforting food, that's gonna be warm, and that is going to um, maybe be something that I can't make for a few weeks. So I'm going with cream cheese chicken chili. It's a great recipe. I'll also have to say that I had a bonus. I found the unicorn fat-free cream cheese at Kroger. So even though the recipe does say that you can use, um, and I apologize, I printed this off a long time ago, so they've made a change to the recipe. So go look up cream cheese um, chicken chili number two, and that's the one that's best for weight loss. It's a negative one. The regular one is a zero on the weight loss meter, which means it's, you know, it's not bad. It's Shibboleth approved, but it doesn't really do anything for you. So negative one is better. But anyway, I digress. It actually tells you in there, if you can't find the fat-free cheese, what to do. And if that's your, um, if that is your situation, I will let you guys go look that up and figure that out, okay? Because there's lots of great different ways that we can make the fat-free cream cheese. You can use the third um, cream cheese and you just use less of it, but it changes the weight loss meter and then it's only in certain recipes. So I don't want to say that's a across the board substitute because it's not. So just like I was chatting with someone today, I was like, I don't know why it's approved. It just is, Travis says, and it's in the recipe and it says that. I don't try to figure out the science. I just follow the rules. So anyway, cream cheese chicken chili. So first of all, I was able to find the unicorn. So whenever I find this, one of my favorite things to make is this recipe. And a new one I love to make is the ultimate buffalo chicken dip. It also calls for this. So that's probably what I'll be doing probably Friday because <laughs> I also can't have that next week. But I also was able to find some chicken breasts on sale at um, Publix. I don't know if you can see it, but it was $3.99 a pound. And this is Springer Mountain Farms, which I love this chicken. Um, I usually buy it in the bag. I don't have an example, but I usually buy the frozen chicken breast in a bag, uncooked, and I can get that usually at like Ingles, and there's about two pounds in there. I think it's like 1.75 pounds, and it's about, um, I think it's anywhere if it's on sale, it might be $5.99, but it's like regularly $9.99. But I got this 2.38 ounces of chicken breast at $3.99 a pound, not frozen, they were fresh, and that's a total of $9.50. So with the prices of grocery store going crazy, I definitely try to look and buy and find. Now, I did buy these a while ago. I bought two packages, and I put these in the freezer, and I can put this completely frozen in my crock pot while I'm making the recipe, but I've just had it sitting out for a little bit, so it's kind of almost thawed out. Um, the other ingredient that you need for cream cheese chicken chili, so I found the unicorn, I found a really good deal on chicken breast, is a can of black beans. So I wasn't sure if I had black beans. I did actually happen to have them, so I'm going to be using these. But I did also read in the recipe instructions, descriptions, and again, I just looked it up online and then I had this one in my Shibby cookbook, so I didn't reprint it. But it also says, and I also believe it's when you read underneath the recipe, like the comments. Always read the comments in a recipe because someone is going to have a question that you might have and they might have already answered it. And Kim Shibboleth or Joni Shibboleth or Sasha or someone official has answered that question. So one of the questions was, what if I don't have 
black beans, what can I use? And they said, yes, I do have my pig hat on. I'm like cold freezing in my house, wishing I was at Apalachicola, St. George Island at the Little Pig. But one of the things that they said you could do is just look up other, like what kind of bean is this? A black bean is a category six, right? So look up other category six beans and use those. So if I didn't have the black beans on hand, I could have used um, pinto beans, which we use in Better Than Wendy's Chili. I also could have used, oh, I didn't get them out. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> Chickpeas um, or yeah, chickpeas or garbanzo beans, um, you could use those. That's a Category 6. I read in the descriptions where Kim Shaboleth had said you could use um, navy beans or cannellini beans, which are also Category 6. So if you definitely don't have, you know, let's say you have found the unicorn cream cheese and you had your frozen chicken in the freezer and you just don't have the black beans, but you probably have another bean in your cabinet, right? So anyway... Got these, these are all different kinds. Like this is from Kroger. And I love these beans because it's organic, Simply Truth Organic. They're very affordable, but they don't use any preservatives. It's really just black beans, water, and salt, which is awesome. I love that. Sea salt, as a matter of fact. And so the other ingredient we use in cream cheese chicken chili is a can of Rotel. So I love Rotel. Don't get me wrong. Um, I don't necessarily have, always have it at home. Some people always do. They love it. They use it in lots of recipes. There's lots of great recipes to make with Rotel. One that's not exactly Shibboleth approved with Velveeta cheese. But anyway, I digress. We won't talk about that. Maybe that's a Super Bowl party <laughs> recipe we'll make um, this coming weekend. But Rotel, when I go to the store, I find it very hard to find one that doesn't have preservatives and stuff in it. And if you know me, I'm a Shibboleth girl, and yes, every once in a while, I'll have something that has some preservatives in it, but I try to do my best to not. So I kind of do it in moderation. Um, and when I'm looking up Rotel, it has a lot of preservatives in it. So I went online and I was like, how can you make Rotel? And then maybe you just don't even have Rotel in the house, okay? Um, the best thing to do is if you happen to have one of these little jars of green chilies, and this is an organic brand, I got this at Kroger, and you have a can of diced tomatoes, okay? Diced tomatoes and green chilies make Rotel. Now I also, with the power of, and I'm not gonna say the word because I'm using my phone to do this live, and if I say S-I-R-I, -I, it's probably going to turn on. <laughs> but I asked the S-I-R-I -I on my phone, how many ounces is in a can of Rotel? And the answer is 10 ounces. Now, this is a 14.5 ounce, and then this adds 4 ounces. So if I were to put the two together and make it, I probably just wouldn't put the whole thing in there. However, at the store, this is what I found. This is our organic Rotel, you guys. Can you see that? So when I looked up the recipe on how to do it, it said you can use diced tomatoes, but buy the fire roasted ones, right? So I went to find the fire roasted diced tomatoes, and guess what? With green chilies. So this is basically Rotel. So I didn't have to make it, and I didn't have to buy the one that had the preservatives in it. So I'm going to use this. But this little dude, I love this little guys. These little green chilies, these are great. I use this in a lot of stuff. There's a lot of great recipes. Um, what's the um, Santa Fe chicken casserole? I think that's what it's called. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't remember that name. Anyway, I love these little green chilies. They're great. Um, the next thing to use is a packet of Fiesta Ranch Mix. Okay, so what is that? Like, I looked everywhere trying to find this Southwest um, Fiesta Ranch, and I couldn't find it. I mean, nowhere had it. So, again, I asked for the help of my SIRI, what is Fiesta Ranch Mix? Well, it's basically ranch and taco mix. 
So I run on over to the little, um, you know, the spice aisle where they keep all those packets. And again, when you look up those packets, like McCormick packets, now there's nothing wrong with them if you use them, don't get me wrong. I just would prefer to have one that doesn't have all the chemicals in it. A lot of those packets are full of salt and sugars that we don't need. So A, if you can make them, which I'm going to show you in a minute, I do, do make them. But two, if you can find a different alternative like this one, Simply Organic. This is a ranch dressing mix. They have a mild taco mix. And they also have a Southwest taco mix. So what I'm going to do is go ranch and taco because I'm, I'm thinking Southwest is probably more like it has Chipotle or something in it, which I love, but I'm just going to go mild taco and ranch. Now, for all of you Shibboleth people who love the to die for roast, guess what else they have? Italian dressing, brown gravy. These are the three mother um, packets that go in the to die for roast. And don't forget your radishes because that's the best part. So these simply organic things I have found all over. Whole Foods has them. I've seen them at Kroger. I've seen them at Ingles. Sometimes like when I go to Kroger or I go to Ingles and also Whole Foods, I'll have to say this, they're in several different aisles. So you're going to have like the brown gravy might be on the pasta rice aisle. The um, Italian dressing mix and the ranch mix might be where the salad dressings are. Some of the taco mixes and Southwest taco mixes are with the, on the spice aisle. But the best thing to do is if you can't find them, you can ask, A, do they carry them? B, where are they? And I have also seen them online, just simplyorganics.com. You can buy them by the packet, think Amazon, think anything like that. It might not be most cost efficient doing Amazon, but you can get them and you can get all the packets. I love them again. Ranch, brown gravy, Italian, wonderful, to die for roast. But today I'm going to do ranch and mild taco, but I am going to give you guys another trick of what I do. So let's say, for example, I didn't have the taco, okay? Well, I looked up on Pinterest, and I do have a Pinterest board. It's in my Shibboleth board. I think it's called How to Make Seasonings or something. But this is, um, you can make this, and I guarantee you have everything in your cabinet to make it. Just look it up. Like, how do I make taco mix? Or how do I make, I make ranch mix too. Um, it's just hard for me to find the buttermilk powder, so I don't make it as often, especially now that I found this, I don't make it as often. But you also can make, um, and I make all the time, where'd it go? Italian dressing mix. Just look it up. How do I make it? Guess what? This Italian dressing mix, I have the recipe. It's on the other side of the room, so I'm not going to go grab it. But if anybody wants it, just comment below and I'll put the recipes on there for you. But it calls for sugar, which I don't want. It calls for excessive amount of salt, which I don't want. And I guarantee you, I have oregano, thyme, basil, like all of the things that are in here. And sea salt, which if, depending on if you wanted to put that in there or not. Now, I would probably put the amount of salt that it asks for in the dressing mix, but just half. That would be me. If you have a sodium issue, do zero, because guess what? We're When we cook, we season our food, we salt our food. We don't need to add more salt, and we definitely don't need to add more sugar. So Italian dressing mix. See, this is my little jar. It's my little mason jar that pops up, and I have my Italian blend in there. Now, it looks like I need to make more, right? So I got my recipes out so I can make more. Then um, these little tiny mason jars, um, they're so cute. I think I got them at Home Goods. I think. One Christmas I did, I don't know if you guys have ever been to a My Favorite Things party, and you make your favorite things. So I made um, Italian mix, taco mix, and ranch mix. And all three of them were part of my favorite things that I took to the party, and I had them in these little jars. It was super cute. And the very first person that ever brought me something in this super little cute jar like this 
was Wayne Glazer. And I don't know if she's on the real skinny, but Wayne Glazer brought me her house salt when she came over to my house one time. I'm like, what a wonderful like gift, a hostess gift. If you're going to someone's house, you can take them something that you've made. So cute. And these were like, I don't know, they were like $3.99 for a set of 12. They were so inexpensive. And you guys know like spices are so inexpensive and you buy one and you have like eight of them in your cabinet. So you can make all of this stuff. So Italian dressing mix or Italian blend, I use it for both. I do have a separate um, Travis spaghetti one because I love Travis spaghetti. I shared about that yesterday and he uses, and it's fine if you can find the McCormick spaghetti mix, but I just looked up how do you make spaghetti mix and I made my own and it's right here, Travis spaghetti. Now, sometimes in the packets, they put something to help it not stick, but that's okay. I just use a spoon and stir it up. <laughs> so that's Travis spaghetti. I make that. Of course, my favorite is everything but the bagel. Again, I had everything in my cabinet to make this. And do you guys know how expensive this is because it's so popular? Look, just make it. Use it. It's great. Um, another one that I did is I made the Cajun spice. I used this for the um, paleo gumbo recipe because it calls for Cajun spices. And again, I had it all in my pantry. Um... What else do I have over here? Lowry seasoning salt. Who loves Lowry seasoning salt? And it's so salty. So I did not use as much salt. And you guys will be shocked. It's like paprika, cumin, and salt. Like that's it. Or it might be turmeric. I don't remember. But something that makes it yellow. Which I also like instead of it being like red food coloring number four or blue color number two or whatever. That's so bad for you guys. Don't, don't eat anything that has red food coloring in it or any food coloring, really. And I've actually seen a good friend of mine post about how she took her daughter off of all food colorings in her foods, and her daughter's like four or five. And if you remember this, I'm an empty nester, so, but if you remember this, when your kids would come home from preschool and they would have a red sticker, <laughs> they had a red sticker day, but she's like, she went from all red sticker days to green sticker days, and girl, I knew exactly where she was going with that, because I remember I had a daughter and two boys, and they were, they were friends of red sticker days, um, and a lot of times I go back like 30 something years ago and wish I would have known more about this stuff and tried to eliminate a lot of that stuff from their diets. I generally did as they got older, which they still have PTSD about, like we had no Coke in our house and <laughs> they'd have to go to their friend's house to eat Doritos and Fruit Loops. But anyway, I digress. Um, that's the Lowry seasoning salt. There is a chicken salad that calls for Lowry's and you can, again, adjust the amount of salt that you want in it. It doesn't have to be so salty. Um, I already did this one. I already did this one. Oh, um, fajita mix. That's a good one too. Now it could be just like, you know, chili powder, the same thing or a chili mix, but fajita mix, I don't necessarily remember why. And it smells good. It smells more cumin-y than a chili powder. But anyway, you can look them all up on, just go to Pinterest. How to make seasonings or how to make Italian dressing mix or whatever it is that you're looking for. Find the one that you like. Uh, again, when I print off the recipe, I always omit sugar. I always omit any kind of thing that they want me to add to make it not, you know, stick together because that's just a chemical. I don't need that. And um, so today I'm going to be using, like I said, that ranch dressing mix and mild taco. But guess what? I have my own taco seasoning. I bet y'all knew this was coming. So I have my own taco seasoning that I've already made. So guess what else I used my S-I-R-I -I for? And if you're just tuning in, you're wondering why I'm spelling it. I don't want to say it because it'll come on because I'm using my phone <laughs> to record this video. But I asked the S-I-R-I, -I, how many tablespoons is in one packet of taco uh, mix bag? This is a one ounce bag. So guess what it told me? Three tablespoons. <laughs> so now I know all I got to do is use three tablespoons of this taco seasoning. Now I'm pretty sure I don't have three in there. So I'm going to make this 
because that's the point of this was the cream cheese chicken chili. But I'm gonna make this cream cheese chicken chili recipe number two. It only means number two because they don't put corn in it and it's better for um, the weight loss and the weight loss meter. But anyway, it's the second one added to the recipe library. But I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna use this taco seasoning instead of the mild taco from Simply Organic. So I'm going to have, you know, there is a little bit of sugar in this, so there's not gonna be any sugar in it. And there's 310 milligrams per serving, and there's four servings in this packet of salt or sodium. So I don't add sodium to mine. Like I told you, I can always salt later. And I'd rather, um, you know, be in charge of what I'm adding to my food, sugar, salt, chemicals, whatever. So long explanation to make this simple little five ingredient recipe, but y'all can see I write all over it because I'm like, this is how I make Rotel and this is like the packet is. <laughs> and that's why I love to print off my recipes that I have my Chevy, my Chevy cookbook. I put everything in a, a, a sheet protector I, I pulled this one out so I could write on it, but I put everything in a sheet protector because I don't have to get everything messy. But I'm going to show you how to make this. So I have my Pampered Chef Rock Crock, and no, I am not a Pampered Chef. I don't sell Pampered Chef. I just love Pampered Chef. But um, this is my favorite thing because this crock, guys, it's a Dutch oven. So you can cook it in the oven, you can put it right on the stove top and you can brown your meats and stuff in it, then just put it right in the little stand, bam, now it's a slow cooker. So anyway, if you know a Pampered Chef person, hook them up, you gotta get one of these. So, take off the top, I'm gonna start it on low, cause on low it says it can cook for six hours, it's 11 o'clock, what time does that make it? Five o'clock, it's ready, so I'll be ready for dinner. So it says to just place all the ingredients in your slow cooker on high for four hours or six for, um, or six on low. And then you serve it with miracle rice or you can eat it alone. I don't have miracle rice, so I won't do that. And it says one to one and a half cups of meal. It also is a one plus six plus C. So there's no two in it. Okay, so guess what? You can serve it with a two. So what am I gonna do? Butternut squash. So guess what Guess what video I'm gonna do next after this, because it'll be really long if I did that, is how to cut this and cook it. Because <laughs> everybody has such a hard problem with this guy, and it's like, don't, don't be hating my butternut squash. I mean, yes, you can buy it already chopped up. Yes, you can do all that at the grocery store, which when I went to the grocery store, this little guy at Kroger was $3.23. It was $5.99 to buy it already chopped up. So if we're like, you know, want to save up so we can buy eggs. We need to like try to find these little simple swaps that we can do at the store that cost a little bit less money. So buying it already chopped up, Vicki, I see you, is not a bad thing. I have a zoodler. I've zoodled it. But my next video, which I'll do next because I do have to chop it up for later for tonight. And I'm going to use this part for my cubing, because I'm gonna eat my cream cheese chicken chili over cubed butternut squash. And then tomorrow night or Thursday night, I'm gonna make hamburgers with butternut squash fries. So this part will be my fries. So I'm gonna show y'all how to do that next. But anyways, whether you buy it like this or you buy it already cubed or spiraled or whatever, or frozen or fresh or whatever, it doesn't matter. A butternut squash is a category two. And I'll show you guys how to make this um, in my next video but cubed and fries. Normally I just make the whole thing fries because it's Tony and I, but I'm just gonna eat the fries by myself. So I'll make them both that way. So anyway, it also says you can eat it with a category two salad with zero calorie dressing. Most of the time, what is a zero calorie dressing? There's the Walden Farms dressing. And I will say they're changing their formulas to more organic ingredients and they're using stevia for sweeteners, not all the bad, gross, yuck stuff. So look into those Walden Farm dressings, y'all. They are changing them. They will have a new, um, a newer type of a label on it where it's almost like imprinted in the bottle. I think the old ones were like a paper like this that wrapped around the bottle. But anyway, look at the ingredients. Those Walden Farm dressings are great. But sometimes when I do, if I were to do this and eat it over lettuce, I would just 
put the chili on top of the lettuce. Last night I had arugula and I just put lemon juice on it. Like that's zero calorie dressing, right? Um, that's a really good tip. You don't necessarily have to have a salad dressing. So anyway, I think I'm done talking about everything else except making this stinking recipe. So I'm going to take my chicken because that's ingredient number one. And I'm just going to open up my little, my little guy here. And I'm going to put my chicken breast. See, they're still kind of frozen. But since I'm going to be slow cooking it, it doesn't really matter. I can um, put them in there frozen, which is great. And I'm going to put this down. And then, because I just touched all that yucky chicken. Y'all know I got all this. My family calls me granola crunchy. I love these Norwex. Um, and I y'all, I am not an affiliate with any of these places. I just love all this stuff. But this is a bacteria towel. And um, you can, this is all I wash my countertops with. I don't use any chemicals on my countertops. I use these little guys. Um, this is their kitchen towel. This is another kitchen towel. My favorite is this little dude. Look how little he is. I just wipe it and wipe down my whole entire kitchen, my microwave, everything, my sink. I never have to worry about using harsh chemicals in my kitchen because I love these Norwex towels. If you don't have a Norwex person, I do. Her name's Hillary Milliken, and she lives in Chickamauga, it, uh, in the cove. She's got a farm. She is the cutest thing with the two cutest little redhead babies. And I love to buy my Norwex stuff from her. So um, if you want to look into these backlock Norwex towels, I can send you her info. They are awesome. These are like, look, this is a really big, huge one I use for like dishes. I use this one just like I just did to wipe my hands from the chicken. And I don't even feel the chicken on my hands anymore. And I can put this down and the backlock takes that bacteria away. And guess what? You just throw them in the washing machine. No chemicals, no Clorox, no Lysol, no nothing that I have to use on my countertops. So, got the chicken in there. Um, next, I am going to put in my fat-free cream cheese. Now, again, remember I told you guys that if you can't find the fat-free, or maybe you don't want to use the fat-free cream cheese, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, this recipe, there is either it was in the descriptions or in the comments below. They talked about how you could substitute full fat cream cheese and that third fat cream cheese, reduced fat cream cheese, if you wanted to. Okay. But I'm just going to use this because I found the magic unicorn at Kroger. So I'm going to use that. And the next is the Fiesta Ranch, which we talked about which is our ranch dressing mix from Simply Organic. I'm gonna dump that in. This is the easiest meal to make, you guys. It just took me 25 minutes to show y'all how to do it, but it's gonna take me three seconds to put it in this crock pot. So look, let's see how many tablespoons. I got one tablespoon of taco seasoning. I got two. Oh, I might have three. So if you remember, I don't know if you were here earlier, but um, I, look, I asked the SIRI how many tablespoons I could use for my um, well, look at here. Perfect. Just dump that rest in there for kicks and giggles. But it's three tablespoons of any type of seasoning that you make yourself in a substitution for like a, a packet. So there you go. So I got the chicken. I got the cream cheese. I got the Fiesta Ranch. Now I'm going to add my black beans. Ooh, it's like I knew I had a can opener somewhere. I'm going to add my black beans. Now, it doesn't say that you have to rinse or um, drain these. And again, because they're simply organic and it's just Pinto's salt and water, I'm just going to pour it in. Normally, I do rinse them because it might have some chemicals or something in there. And yes, um, Sophie, I, my friend Julia is like, I hear Sophie Lynn. Yes, my dog is barking. She's a hot mess. I had to actually shut my curtains behind me. We call that kitty cat TV because we have in our, in our living room, we have this big sliding glass door and I have these big drapes. And when you open them up, she sees everybody walk by, all the cats that come by. And she goes bonkers. So I thought, well, I'll shut that. But in the end, she's still barking. But 
this is my life. So I'm going to pour in the, um, the black beans. And look, they all came out. Wow, that never happens. And then what else do I have to put in there? Okay, I have chicken, ranch, taco, black beans, cream cheese. Oh, the Nutella. The Rotel. Woo! Nutella. I did see um, Instagram. It's called I Grew Up Italian. No, I didn't grow up Italian. My husband did. And I started following it. It's so funny. And they had a, um, a pizza they'd made with uh, Nutella and strawberries. And they had um, in the crust. The crust was stuffed with Nutella. I love that stuff. I do. My kids. If, I want to tell you all a quick story while I'm opening up this Rotel. Or these diced chilies with diced um, tomatoes with green chilies. And it's fire roasted. I'm going to show you. It's really pretty. But when my kids were little... They would go to preschool. They were like, go to lunch bunch, you know, after. So preschool was from 9 to 12, and they could stay an extra hour early afterward. And I would make my son Giovanni a Nutella peanut butter sandwich. And I don't know, I went to a conference one time, and one of the teachers asked me why I was making him a Jello pudding sandwich. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny. I was like, it's not Jello pudding. I mean, it might have as much sugar as Jello pudding, and it has some peanut butter, but it's Nutella, not Jello pudding. But I cracked up. I was like, "How long have those people thought I've been sending my kid with Jello chocolate Jello pudding sandwiches?" That's hilarious. Well, anyway, here's our fire roasted tomatoes. I think you can see them. They're fire roasted in there, and they've got the little green chilies in there. Oh, I can smell the green chilies. I was wondering because. I love these things so much. I actually thought about adding this in that with that, but you actually can smell the green chili, so that's good. So we just put this on top, the green chilies. Ta-da! That's it, y'all. I don't even stir it. I'll probably look at it in like an hour or two and just kind of stir it around. Then I'll just put my top on. Ta-da! And there you go. Dinner. Served. Like I said, it took me five minutes to put this all together. It took me 30 minutes to make this video. But I am going to enjoy this tonight for dinner around 5 o'clock when it's ready. Six hours. I'll have to go turn my timer on. And um, I'll show you guys a picture later of what it looks like. All right. I'll have a great day. Bye.